hi guys good day and welcome back to my channel if you are new here you're welcome my name is Ulua Tosen. so guys i want to firstly apologize for the delay in uploading this particular video because 10 days ago i uploaded a tutorial on how to cut this particular dress i was supposed to have uploaded the sewing tutorial a very long time ago but i don't know if you guys noticed i lost my voice i had an event and then i lost my voice after then i've been patiently waiting for me to regain my voice before making this video but i see that it's not um, visible yet and life has to go on so that is why i decided to make this voice over like this if not i have this video recorded for a very long time ago it's just that i could not add voice over to it because of how my voice is but I just have to do it like that because a lot of people reached out to me on instagram i got a lot of messages on instagram requesting for the sewing video of my last video so i just have to make this video like that so thank you guys so much for your love shown towards my previous video that is the cotton video of this particular dress thank you i see the like the comments i really appreciate it and i don't take it for granted so if this happens to be the first video you are seeing for this particular dress. I would suggest you go back to my previous video to see the cutting tutorial so that you can understand this sewing tutorial. I will be putting the link up and also in the description box. So guys, the first thing to do is to turn your flea. So we are going to be turning our flea right side facing right side. And then we are going to be turning our flea with hemming gum. I've still not opened this flea up at any part at all. Not even the part where the zip is going to pass. I've not. So just face right side to right side. I mean your main fabric to your door face now. Just make sure the right side is facing the right side. And you know because I'm using crepe and this kind of crepe I'm using is a little bit stretchy. That's why I made the door face up so that as I'm sewing the crepe doesn't stretch longer than the door face so if your fabric is a little bit stretchy please make sure the lining is up so that you can control the way it stretches i know you guys get what i'm saying so just keep turning with hemming gum and after turning this is what i have the next thing to do is to flip it over to the right side if there's a need to trim please go ahead to trim just make sure that you don't trim out the hemming gum as you can see the waistline is still intact i've not opened it up anywhere not even decide where the zip is going to pass. So I proceeded to trimming this. There are some parts that need trimming. I proceeded to doing that. If you need trimming, like I said, you should go ahead to trim. And if it doesn't, just proceed to flipping it to the right side. After trimming, I flipped it to the right side. And this is what I have. The next thing is to give this a good press. Don't forget that. The lining is going to stick together with the fabric because of the hemming gum. When you are pressing, please make sure that one doesn't like go down and the other one up. You know, the way flay is now after turning and pressing, please let this, this one be on the same line. Like don't let the lining go down too much. You see the way mine is, they are on the same line you get. Like I did not shift the lining down a little bit. So that's it. After then, this is the belt. I proceeded to sew in the belt. I flipped it to the right side and then I gave it a good press. The next thing now is to shape the half cut. And to shape the half cut, don't forget I said that this dress is inside sewing. All our join will be inside. So this is the front panel now. This is the right side facing up. And then I faced the right side of the back panel as well on the right side. Of the front panel please make sure right side is facing the right side and make sure that your zip allowance is either facing each other and standing the way mine is standing now or you just proceed to pinning it down you can even sew it down you would not double stitch so that you can lose it when the time comes so the next thing to do is to divide our bust by four and then you mark then our waistline divided by four and you proceed to marking then I'm measuring the half length now. Our half length is 13. You know, I left like half inch allowance that I'm going to use to join the shoulder line. 
I'm measuring this half length so that I will know where my belt is going to stay. You get so the pointy part of the belt now is going to be up and the other part is going to be down and i'm just going to pin my belt down leaving half inch downward the half inch is what i'll use to attach the half cut to it i hope i'm making sense then just proceed to pinning your belt down on both sides then i also pinned down the shoulder line I pinned down the shaping side. I'm going to shape the other side too at this point so that I'll just get to my sewing machine and start sewing. So just do the same thing. It is that simple. In this case now, for the other side, the bust divided by two, not four. I know you guys get what I'm saying. Then the waistline divided by two as well. Please make sure that your zip allowance is up. While you are doing this, then just proceed to pinning the belt down, leaving half inch allowance towards the down. The half inch is what you are going to use to attach the lower part of the dress to the half cut. Then I did the same thing to the lining. I face the right side of the front panel of the lining to the right side of the back panel of the lining. Then I marked it as well. But because the crap I'm using is a little bit stretchy, the shaping for the lining is like one inch more than the shaping of the main fabric. You get this person's bust is 26, I shaped 27. Then I waist as well, I added one inch allowance. The reason is because in case the crepe will stretch when she's wearing it, there will be excess allowance for like the crepe to stretch on. I hope you guys get what I'm saying. So now as I placed the main fabric on it to trace out the shaping, I just extended my hand outward a little so that it's going to be one inch bigger than the main fabric. I hope you guys get what I'm saying. Then I proceeded to shaping. Then let me take this to my sewing machine and bring it back to show you guys what it's looking like when I was done shaping. So here it is after shaping, I shaped the main fabric separately and then the lining separately. So the next thing to do is to put a notch at the middle for each. Now this is the flag, the lower part of the dress. Then for the back now, you're going to fold it. Please make sure you fold it as neat as possible. Just the way you cut it out, you're going to fold it that way. So that you can get center front and center back perfectly. So for the center back, you are going to tear it open or cut it open, not too long. It's not going to go too down at all. Just cut the length that after tying the belt, the belt that is remaining can still cover the join or cover the, the zip when the person is putting it on. I hope you guys get what I'm saying. Like don't tear it too long. So with that knowledge, I'm going to cut it because after tying the belt, what is going to remain in my case is 11. So I'm going to open up it. The 8 now is going to serve as the part where the zip is going to stay. And then for the center front, I'm just going to put a notch at that part. So the next thing to do now is to pin the notch parts for the two panels. I mean the upper panel and the lower panels now together and just sew it from one side of the half cut to the other side of the half cut as you can see my fabric is very very stretchy so after sewing this is what i have the dress is gradually coming out well so the next thing to do now is to just close like one inch downward or two inches downward from the zipper allowance side just just like to create a channel for the zip to stay on and when you want to sew look at i i i didn't start from i left i moved like one inch inward then i'm just going to slant my hand outward so that i can just create a, a little channel where the zip is going to stay so after that just press that's like two inches that you sew so that everything is going to come out Neat. So this is what the inside is looking like after doing that. 
The next thing to do now is to attach your strong mesh. The strong mesh, I went ahead to weave it so that it doesn't fray or start making whoever is wearing it uncomfortable. So you remember this is going to have excess, like there's going to be pleating in this one. But before then, we need to still open it up. I mean, the zipper allowance side, just the way we did for um, the flay itself. So just measure it on the body of the flay and just proceed to cutting that. After then, sew it around the waistline, just the same way we sew the flay all over the waistline. And I proceeded to weave in that joint too, so that, you know, it can get discomfort and sometimes this mesh, except you weave or you pipe that waistline side. So for the lining now, we are going to proceed to sewing the lower part of the lining to the upper part of the lining. That is the doll face to the lining. Just notch the center of the half length for the lining as well. And then I proceeded to gathering the lining, then I weaved it down. After then put a notch at the middle, then pin the right side to the right side, just the same way we did for the main fabric. Then proceed to creating the channel where the zip is going to pass also. After then fix your zip. And after fixing my zip at this point, this is what I have. Don't forget that we have still not turned the neckline. So after fixing the zip, here is what the dress is looking like. The dress is already giving. Gradually, we are at like 30% now, guys. So the next thing to do after this is to turn our neckline. And this is the lining that has the upper part and the lower part of the lining attached on each other. Then I created the channel where the zip is going to stay as well. So the next thing to do is to face the right side of the lining to the right side of the main fabric and then you turn from one side to the other so that you can turn the tip of the zip as well. So just proceed to turning and after turning guys, turn with hemming gum as well. Turn the neckline with hemming gum then after turning this is what I have. I turned the zipper allowance side too. I hope you guys get what I'm saying. And at this point, here is what my dress is looking like. Then the next thing to do after now is to work on the sleeve. And to work on the sleeve, I'm just going to pop one of the sleeves and then I'm going to face the lining to the right side of it. Right side of the lining is going to face the right side of the sleeve. And after then, the sleeve as well is going to be like inner joining. You're not going to be seeing the joining from the armpit side. So I'm going to face lining to the main fabric. And instead of just turning the normal way we used to turn pencil sleeve or whatever kind of sleeve, we'll not be doing that. Just fold it as I folded it. And then you sew that part that my finger ran across. After sewing, I proceeded to attaching it to the armhole. Of course, you know you have to retrain your armhole and then check that your shoulder is the number that you want it to be. Then, after attaching the sleeve, I'll proceed to tacking. If you check the style very well, there's this part of the sleeve that is tacked. Apart from the puff that is there, it's tacked. So, just neatly tack it so that it comes out the way it's supposed to come out. So, now for the bow. I proceeded to add in my interfacing, then I turned leaving only one side open. The next thing is to pick up crinoline depending on how standing you want the bow to be. You can double the crinoline, you can even triple it, you can roll it over four times. But in this case, I did it just three times. Then just, and this is the small piece I'll be using to like hold the bow together. So flip the bow to the right side and after then put your crinoline line inside then pick up your pressing iron to press down that part and then use hemming gum to gum it and you use the single, sorry, the little piece to like 
hold it together and then you turn it inside out. So now put one belt inside the bow so that the bow can be removable, like you can detach it. And after then, this is our dress. At this point, it is like 90% ready. So this is the dress. This is the back um back view of the dress and this is the front view of the dress. So the roses on the chest, I could not make a video of when I was done attaching it on the dress, but these are the roses because I made like six or seven of these dresses. I did a lot of roses and I could not film the making process of these roses, but here they are. Thank you so much for watching my video from the beginning to this point. Please don't forget to subscribe if you still have any questions. Do not hesitate to ask me in the comment section. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.